Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Not quite a plug side chat, but close enough. Uh, so by now I think most people have heard about the GMC Hummer EV. It's been officially unveiled. Uh, and you know, I didn't want to really talk about that. I, I think <laughs> some journalists are probably going to be issuing a, an apology soon because uh, they didn't realize that uh, GM uses a sort of an IVR process where there's like an integration and validation prototype uh, that's their pre-production prototype but before they even get to that they do a bunch of testing um, so so yeah I think a, a couple of uh, publications maybe misspoke in uh, misunderstanding that and trying to to sort of equate it to what happened with Niccolo where they were pretending to have a functioning prototype that didn't exist uh, that's not how GM works uh, there's there's no cause for alarm. Uh, no GM knows what they're doing, and their GMC Hummer EV uh, is well into its development. So uh, I didn't really want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about how GM has kind kind of spilled the beans on their Ultium battery lineup, and really what we can expect from it, and what we can expect from the vehicles that are using it. And one of the things that bothered me about GM's EV day is there were a number of questions that weren't really asked uh, about the Ultium battery line. And uh, I think that's unfortunate, but we're starting to see some of those uh, gaps and omissions uh, start to be answered. And, you know, I never published this video, but it was my initial reaction to the uh, GM EV day presentation and one of the things that I wanted to know is how GM was linking all of these disparate Ultium modules but I think it even goes deeper than that and nobody really probed GM because one of the the things that they showcase is what they call their Ultium batteries and what it's going to allow GM to do is put modules into the packs that don't even necessarily have to have the same battery chemistry because each module has a built-in battery management system that self-corrects for whatever battery chemistry you have in there and they're stringing these together in 6, 12, 24 module packs. So when you do that though I think what what's missing from what GM showcased and what people were asking about is how are all of those modules tied together? Because rumor mill, right, there's a possibility that GM might be looking into 1200 or even 1600 volt architecture. Now that's not necessarily supported with what's currently deployed. But if they have the proper switching and proper control within these Ultium battery packs, you're not, you're not just looking at a 30% increase in charging speed, you could be looking at a 50% or a 75% increase in charging speed. And you know if they're, if they're doing that with their proprietary charging system, well, that could also be game changing as well. So they didn't openly state that, but again, nobody really prodded them to ask about it either. It, it turns out that it's through a wireless BMS, which is, you know, it's the first of its kind. It's, it's amazing. And uh, it turns out that, you know, a lot of us thought, oh, the GMC Hummer EV, it's going to be built on an 800 volt architecture. It's not. It's a 400 volt architecture, just like everything else that they have. But it's going to run a, a split parallel series pack. Essentially, when the vehicle is running, it's 400 volts. When it plugs into a DC fast charger, it can switch over so those packs are running instead of in parallel, they're running in series. So it essentially doubles the voltage and doubles you know, the charging speed, it technically more than doubles the charging speed with the same size cable. And that's really the important part of the 800 volt architecture. Uh, and and you know, there are hundreds and hundreds now of sites across the United States with not only 800 volt charging, but specifically 350 kilowatt charging, which is what the Hummer EV will charge at. And this is why I said they sort of spilled the beans here a bit because I keep seeing all of these Easter eggs that GM is dropping, uh, whether it be the 
lyric, right? The Cadillac lyric has a top speed of 150 miles an hour. Uh, they sort of hinted at that in their display. You know, all it takes is someone to look at it, do the math, and they, they'd figure that out. Uh, and, and even then, during the lyric, the Cadillac lyric uh, unveiling, uh, they were sort of coy about some of the numbers. Now, they admitted that the lyric would have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, but then they said, it's going to have a 300 mile range and people are like, oh that's pathetic 300 mile range 100 kilowatt hour battery pack that's just not competitive with today's evs a and i would agree and everybody thought that because it's a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack it's going to cost close to a hundred thousand dollars and then gm drops a bombshell afterward that no it's going to start at sixty thousand dollars so what does that mean well, there are really two major ways you can cut the price in an EV, and that's either to uh, reduce the battery size or reduce the powertrain if you're using multiple motors. Well, you know, look at the Tesla Model 3 as an example. To get their price point down to around $40,000, what Tesla did was they reduced the battery size by about 30% and removed one of the motors. Okay, I you know, so you can you can kind of see how those are the two major ways you could get the price down. So how do you get the price down of a 100 kilowatt hour SUV with all wheel drive? Well, you remove one of the drive motors and you remove a portion of the battery uh, and you can get the price down to maybe $60,000. And and let's be clear here, I think that the Lyric might top out at $100,000. That's decked out everything. I'm willing to bet you could get a 100 kilowatt hour variant of it for probably 80. Uh, so that $60,000 though still presents a major discount. So how, how did they do that? I think what GM did was they showed the baseline for the Lyric and we already know, they've already been clear about this, the Ultium line, it's going to come in these sort of bilateral packs with a module on either side. It's going to start with as few as six modules uh, all the way up to 24 modules like the Hummer EV has. So if it's a 200 kilowatt hour pack in the Hummer EV, that means it's 8.34 kilowatt hours per module, right? So you have the six module pack is just under 50 kilowatt hours, and then you have uh, the 100 kilowatt hour pack, which would be 12 modules. But nothing says that GM has to use 12 mo modules, the, the entire base pack for that Lyric. They could have used 10, and that makes a lot more sense an 83.4 kilowatt hour pack for a vehicle the size of the Lyric to go about 300 miles, uh, it's a roughly 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, that all adds up, that, that all makes sense. And the designer, when we, they were prodded about the charging speed for the Lyric, they kind of said, oh, it, at least 150 kilowatts. And that's telling, because here's what what the numbers tell us for the GMC Hummer EV is that with a 200 kilowatt hour pack, it's going to charge at a peak rate of 350. Well, if you cut that in half, you get the 100 kilowatt hour pack for the Lyric, but half of 350 is not 150, it's 175. Drop that down to an 83.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's exactly 150 kilowatts of charging speed. So what this means is the top end Cadillac Lyric is more than likely going to be charging at about 175 kilowatts, whereas the entry level Cadillac Lyric is going to be charging at about 150 kilowatts and then of course the Hummer EV is going to be charging at 350 kilowatts. So that's sort of what we can expect from here. Who knows, GM might also be a little bit conservative. Maybe it's not 1.75 C rate, maybe it's a 1.8 uh, C rate, meaning it, it could be a little bit more than 350 kilowatts for the Hummer EV or a little bit more than 150 kilowatts for the base Lyric.
But I think what's even more important about this is the Ultium battery comes with, like I said, those configurations where it could be six modules, it can be eight modules, it can be 10 modules, it can be 12 modules, or it can be up to 24 modules if they double stack it. And that double stack is probably only going to happen for their vehicles like the Hummer EV, which is sort of the bigger, it's the heftier BT1 chassis that's also gonna be used for like the Escalade and other vehicles like that. So that's those are the ones that are gonna get that double stack, uh, but you can expect up to 100 kilowatt hours for basically everything else, mid-size SUVs. Um, but like I said, it's that half-size pack that has me intrigued because again, that's 50 kilowatt hours. So it really needs to go into an efficient vehicle, but using that same 1.75 C rate that we sort of established from the Hummer EV, that means that you're gonna be charging it close to 90 kilowatts, which 90 kilowatts in this day and age, it, it's good, but it's not impressive unless it's paired with a very efficient platform. I know GM was talking about for a while the Buick Electra. Now, just go with me here for a, me a minute, but imagine if the Buick Electra is some sort of a spiritual successor to say the GM Impact, better known as the EV1. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a two-door coupe, but it could be a small, hyper-efficient EV. You know, we haven't seen someone really push for a better efficiency than a, a five to six uh, mile per kilowatt hour efficiency other than uh, the light year one, which is still a concept. But if you were to put a 50 kilowatt hour pack in one of these hyper efficient um, vehicle platforms, something like the first generation Honda Insight, something that even at freeway speeds is gonna see five to six miles per kilowatt hour. Now all of a sudden you're approaching that 300 mile mark that GM had mentioned. And if you pair that 90 kilowatt charging rate, you're looking at somewhere around a 500 mile per hour, as they like to say, uh, charging rate, or you're back to almost 100 miles every 10 minutes of charging. So I don't know that that's where GM is going, but I just think it would be a very cool idea if they considered that some hyper efficient, it could be a two plus two, could be a coupe, but I think the Buick Electra is a perfect name for it. Use the Ultium uh, platform, you know, give it a 225 horsepower <laughs> uh, electric motor. And yeah, and you, you end up with, with something that's a really intriguing platform. There are a lot of people that you know, okay, cool, Hummer EV, big, bad, you know, it's gonna go off-road, it's gonna, you know, crab walk and uh, extract itself, but a lot of us just want a basic, efficient car that can also travel long distances, you know, if quickly and effectively. So I, I think that's something that's worth considering because, like I said, this, this Ultium lineup that GM has, it, it's really impressive uh, across the board. Uh, like I said, they're, they're reducing the wiring, reducing the weight, uh, and that's and that's the other thing too. These nickel, manganese, cobalt, aluminum uh, um, cathode uh, cells that GM is making with with this this first run of Ultium packs, uh, you know, they're they're stepping off point, right? Their their floor is about 300 watt hours per kilogram. And with all of the excess weight, all of the excess wiring that they've been able to remove from the pack itself, you're looking at 80, 90 percent of a pack mass being active content. Uh, so that, that means you're easily looking at, at a pack level of energy density or specific energy of 250 uh, to 300 watt hours uh, per kilogram. I, I think we need to, yeah, just look at these Ultium batteries and all the breadcrumbs basically that uh, uh, GM has left behind because there's, there's a lot of numbers there that I think aren't being scrutinized or aren't being looked at. But what we've seen so far is very compelling and uh, yeah anyway I just wanted to share those thoughts with you because I never really had a chance to sit down like I said I feel like with the Hummer uh, 
EV reveal, uh, GM kind of spilled a little bit more of the beans on, on their Ultium packs. They're, they're impressive. And uh, I look forward to seeing what they actually do in real life. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like they're still going to have this sort of charging taper uh, profile like the Porsche Taycan or the Tesla Model 3 or Tesla Model Y where it peaks really high, low, and, and quickly and rapidly um, decreases the, the charging speed over time. I'm not a huge fan. Um, I, I think that ultimately what we want to be looking for is a flat charging rate uh, to 80 to 90 percent capacity or to a hundred percent of the usable battery capacity. Uh, I think it's going to be better for adoption. It's going to be more convenient. Um, I, I think it's just going to be better all around. Uh, but I might go into that later. My my philosophy on why I prefer a flat charging profile uh, to a curved uh, or tapered or or step down charging profile. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think of the GMC Hummer EV? What do you think of the Cadillac Lyric? Um, and what do you think of the Ultium lineup and, and what GM uh, should be unveiling in the next few years? Anyway, if you enjoy this p video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.